Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 142, and we have special guests coming on later on. Uh, but I'm your host, Vince D'Alessandro. We have Daniel Grom and John Renstrom. This episode is brought to you by Daniel, Magnetech Matt, Hog Glue, and who else? Oh, Mobile oh, Tech. Oh, that one was personal. <laughs> oh, just Mobile yeah. Tech. How can we forget mobile? And you tech? always forget edgy tools, man. Edgy, edgy tools. tools. So you want to go to uh, PDR Tool Time right now. We have 15% off all edgy tools. And uh, so uh, we're, how's everyone doing today? You know, I, I actually woke up with very, very, very sad, bad news. My daughter's hamster died. Oh, yeah. Well, those suckers have a lifespan of like two years. Yeah, but but I actually I didn't want to get the hamster, and I regrettedly, you know, my daughter looked at me with those big puppy dog eyes, and I said, "Okay, you can have the hamster." And I ended up falling in love with the hamster. The hamster was cool. He was a cool hamster, and we just we just got done taking him to the vet. He was a little sick. We got him all healthy again. He was looking good, and we're like, "Oh man, this is good. We might get might get three years out of him." Right. And then this morning, my wife walks in, hamster's not moving. And, like, oh. and then I had to watch my daughter break down and ball. Yeah. It you sucked. know what? How did how did you take care of the 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 remains? <laughs> we we had a we're well my they had a ceremony without me because I'm here recording. Okay. They buried her in the backyard. My wife went and got a special box, biodegradable and all this and well, yeah. l- let me tell you how we did it when we were kids, because we had hamsters and gerbils, <laughs> oh, and it seemed God. like it was always around the you Olympics. You cook them and eat them? No, no. Come on, dude. I'm from a city. I'm from Chicago, man. We don't. We only eat squirrels and bats potato and rats. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we would do is we would – it would always seem to be around the Olympics, right? So we would have our own Olympics with the dead – mouse or rat or hamster and what you do is you hold it we we used to have pet mi- mice and rats so you hold it over the toilet right and you flush the toilet and as the water is going down you let go and they just go whoosh, right up now if you touch the sides that you know you get points deducted for uh you know the sloppiness that's of morbid, dude <laughs> this is wrong i mean goldfish sure that's acceptable goldfish you know but yeah really yeah, I'm just happy I never plugged up the toilet or something. My dad really <laughs> freaking killed me. Uh, see this floating dead thing coming We're going to have to call a plumber. We got a Richard Gear going on in yeah, here. We got the Richard Gear. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Oddly enough, uh, we I had a hamster, and it disappeared for a year in our house. The guy was an a, a, a escape artist. Escape we put artist, yeah. books on the top, and somehow the little bastard got out, and he lived in our house for a year, and... One day, I went into our pantry in our basement, and I went to go grab a jug for to make some orange juice, and the little bastard was in there in the bottom. He couldn't get out, and he was alive, and it was a year later. It was amazing. So we put him back in the cage, and he ended up getting out. We never saw him again. <laughs> well. So, so right. yeah, well, I didn't, hamsters. I, I can't top really any of that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I can I got I got nothing for my 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 week was just like I fixed a few hail cars and I moved into my house permanently for the first time ever. That's yeah. it. That was all my Congratulations. week. Congratulations. That's good. Yeah. Thanks. So <laughs> what do you want to put it out there about your your motor home? You you have the badass most bitchin' motor home that you've lived in for what, three years now? Six years. Six actually. years. It ended up being six years. And it's trained. Years. It's so, trained yeah. for the hill trail. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be putting that up for sale here in the next com- couple. So of any weeks. hail guys that are looking to go on the road, call John, and buy his motorhome. Yeah, <laughs> it it has all the my GPS, my- all the GPS <laughs> coordinates take you to hail zones already, <laughs> and it has yeah. Mobile Tech RX preloaded in it. Preloaded. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so if you're looking for an RV, an awesome custom RV. 
Actually, yeah, it's it not custom built for two. Custom yeah, built for yeah. two. Hit up John Renstrom. Pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, should we introduce our guest there? Yeah, I think so. go ahead and do that. I think so. From dead hamsters to Chad <laughs> Peters from Endeavor Dent Tools. Hey, Chad, how you doing? <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for coming on the show. It's a pleasure. You know, uh, two two out of three of us have been playing around with your tools now for quite some time, and uh, we wanted to get you on here because we're really impressed with the build and and the quality of of what's going on. Uh, before we get into your tools, let, why don't you give us a little brief history of who you are and how long you've been pushing dents and all that? Uh, I am from North Georgia, an hour and a half north of Atlanta. Okay. Kind of up in the foothills. I've been at PDR for uh, a little over four and a half years now. That's awesome. New guy. Uh, yeah. New guy. Um, saw it. Actually, saw a tech push a few dents a long, long time ago in a body shop that I grew up around. And it's kind of a funny story. Kind of just uh, stuck with me long time later, 15 years later, or pr- probably close to it. Um started wanting to do something for myself and for some reason pdr kept coming back to me i don't it, know why it got in your blood early it, it did it's amazing um i can't really explain it but i'm a really uh i'm good at working by myself that's kind of and that was one of the things that was top of my list and it's kind of hard to find things to do like that and pdr yeah. is a, a good one man show so yeah. it kept coming back to the top of the list and uh Ended up going down the road and uh, got hooked up with some good guys in my area. And um, the next four and a half years are history. Where did so you get your are. training from? Did you, uh, do, did you do like a, a training mill or did someone take you under their wing? Yeah, it was uh, initially I studied, uh, studied it for about six months, studied everything I could find. And then I bought some tools, uh, probably the, the wrong way to go about it now looking back at it. But that's just kind of how I am. I went to the local junkyard and bought a door and a deck lid, built stands and put them in my basement nice. and uh, started and made some ground, bought some videos, bought every video, everything I could, learned a lot and then ran into uh, a guy in my area that's a 20 year tech and uh, he was gracious enough to give me the opportunities, you know, after I had, he was timing worked out and, and we, teamed up and then he kind of took me under his wing and showed me the rest of the way, you know, to, to actually get good enough to go out and get paid for it. And here yeah. we are. Now, so when, you, when you were learning, I'm sorry, I, I wanted, let me just ask this real quick. When you were watching the videos, was, were you watching like Mike Toledo and, and John with yeah. Mike, uh, Dent Trainer and stuff like that? That was a lot of them. Yeah. Sal stuff. I got Sal. every single thing that I could get my hands on. Right. Okay. And, uh, it, it's funny. There's such a different approach. Everybody's ways are so different. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think that was good because, yeah. you know, even, even working next to somebody, uh, I learned real quick that their ways are very specific to them, sure. you know, and I had seen all of this instructional stuff for the previous six months, you know, that people were doing it different ways. So through all of that, was able to kind of, I guess, come up with my own style, if you will. And I think we all kind of have our own styles the way I see it. Yeah. Everybody, oh, yeah. everybody that I work around does it all a little bit different, you know, when it comes down to it. Or, I adapt anything that I think is a really cool idea or something, but it's got to be adapted to my, my style, my pushing yep. style, my, you know, how I do everything. So and do you do route stuff or hail? Uh, I'm a route guy. Uh, I have, um, some dealers, some really good dealers, and then a, a lot of body shop work and retail stuff. Um, nice. I do hail locally if we get hit, and we have a few times, you know, minor storms come through our area uh, locally. But um, that's that's the extent of my hail damage. Is that's what happens locally? So okay, yeah. So how did how did you get? So you only been pushing for four years, and and you remind me of myself because I was. I did about the same thing and I started making tools. So what got you started into making your own tools? First of all, do you own a bench grinder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause Daniel has a love affair with bench gri- grinders. So, you know, I, just I throw out the model. Have, upper you just or, said that. So somebody has to drink. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 
So every time we say bench grinder, someone has to drink out there. So uh, I do love bench grinder. Bench, bench bench grinder. grinder. <laughs> <laughs> what what make and model do you have? <laughs> do, you have do you have the do you have the craftsman three quarter horsepower thirty five? No, are the, the illuminated pew? <laughs> oh. I'm a tool junkie bad if it's if it's dent tools or if it's shop tools or machining tools or hand tools. It's it's always been like that. So uh, I love tools. Right. Period. <laughs> um, As we all. Yeah. But the back to your question, Daniel, the I, I guess for me, I've always been that guy. I'm a I guess what you would call a maker or a tinkerer or whatever you want to call it. I grew up you- like that. You told me that you you were in the military, correct? I, I was not in the mil- military. My experience with the military was uh, through working through a, a manufacturer that dealt with the military, that, that produced okay. goods okay. for the military. Gotcha. Uh, and then had military contract. Yes. Uh, we, we did a number of different items for the military uh, and then was able to work along with some companies in development for – uh, some special forces applications and stuff. So got to see a, a lot of different things in a, in a world that I wouldn't have got to see otherwise. So it was a, it was a neat time period. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's neat things. about getting like the military work. And I think I was t- talking to you about this chat is, is that it's kind of an open paycheck, you know, or open yeah. you know checkbook, you know, and uh, we, we had to do some stuff for some floodlights and they just needed it perfect. Absolutely perfect. Even though this these freaking floodlights were going to go sit on an airfield somewhere, it could not have a scratch, ding, nothing on it at all when they received it. Once they received it, they were going to tear the crap out of it. But, you know, it better be perfect when you get it. When they that get was it. The, that was my favorite part about it because uh, that's how that world works. And it's that way with, you know, the entire military or production for the military for the most part. But then when you enter that SOCOM world, it's, it's even to another level and the dollar amount really doesn't matter. There's other factors that are more important. And unfortunately that's kind of how I've always operated. I just, I really liked the details and, and it was a, it was a good fit for while it lasted where well, it shows know. in, in the way you manufacture your tool. Well, thank so, you. So what let's talk about your, your, the Endeavor window hanger and how that came about. Um, it actually, we, when I say we, me and some friends, uh, the guy that put me to work, Tony Pitts, we were working hail in our area. The rod came about first. And then for me, there were hangers out there, but I hate S hooks. I hate chains. I hate straps. There's like a whole list of things that, they work, but they, I just was never happy with it. And we were, we were set up on hail at, at one of the dealers that we work and everybody was working. We had like six guys in there. And in my mind, I kept thinking of, there's gotta be a better way. That's just like now I, even with the have now, like it's gotta be a better way. Two years from now, I want something better, but that's where I was at. And I kept thinking about it. And uh, I, I started playing around with some ideas for I wanted something infinitely adjustable. I didn't want the big notches or those th- that segment. I wanted to be able to get my hand and my arm in the position where I was the most comfortable. It could be the most accurate pushing. So I played around with some ideas way off from where I am now. Long story short, uh, the straps that that the hanger consists of going back to the military, I integrated those straps into a project. It was actually a full load carrier, a very specialized system for, for some guys. And I helped to integrate it into that full load carrier. And it was the same thing. They wanted adjustment, but they wanted it more precise than what they had. And I stumbled on those straps and was able to use them. Fast forward probably five or six years. And I woke up in the middle of the night in this process of trying to solve this door hanger thing hadn't thought anything about those straps after using them in that load carrier woke up in the middle of the night with this vision of those straps solving my problem. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> literally like had spent a considerable amount of time going down other roads, trying to solve it, getting that infinite adjustability. 
never crossed my mind. Those straps. Yeah. Woke up and saw like, Oh my gosh, I, I, this is it, you know? And, now what, uh, what kind of weight rating do those straps have? Do they have a, uh, like a weight, weight, weight rating just as a they, curiosity? They do. Uh, I should be more prepared. I meant to look that up. It's, it's, unbelievable how strong they are they actually have some video of them stress testing in a, in a machine and it's okay. uh if you ever get to that point pushing hail or pushing a dent we've got a real problem right, <laughs> right. well i'm just so, curious you know i've yeah. been around a few dent guys that can break an anvil with a rubber mallet so. uh, yeah <laughs> um i'm kind of looking here as we're talking but and that's the uh, thing because like dent guys are hard on their tools i mean yeah you know, no, certain dent guys. Well, certain dent guys. Yeah, I admit, I'm yeah. I'm fairly tough on my tools because I consider them uh, an expendable item. Yeah. Ultimately, right. uh, in the effort of me getting the job done, uh, but I I haven't. The only tools I really I, break. Are I had ones. an employee, and we I bought him an exact same set of tools of, that I had. And a year later, his looked like he ran over him with a friggin' steamroller. Right. And right. they're all bent up. They're just thrash. And mine looked great. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what well, the like, hell do you do? I, I don't, when I don't Craig really was, thrash anymore. Uh, my, mine's aren't really, mine aren't really thrash, but my knockdowns are thrashed. You know, I had Craig at my shop a, a month ago. And he saw some knockdowns that he had sent me. He's like, what the hell are you fixing with these things, man? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just fixing dents, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fix small stuff. And you, there's times when it's at the edge and, and you're beating on you double layers off. and you're wailing on it. And it's like, that tip's not supposed to do that ever. <laughs> you know, match yeah. grade tips flattened and, you know, peak flattened out. And, yeah. You know, but uh, I, I use the crap out of my knockdowns. The rest of my tools look pretty decent. Yeah. So, so, it, so so his his window hanger just so you guys if you guys haven't seen his window hanger is basically it's got straps that look like straps on on a on a ski boot basically. They're very much like that but they're a little more industrial I guess is the best way to describe it. So and you can just grab the bar and push it up though, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then but you can but you push it up in eighth inch increments. Yeah. yeah. So with with the hangers that are out there now, yeah. They, now that's just his strap. That's not me. I'm just I'm throwing that out there yeah, yeah. right now. It's all it's all good. Don't need to wipe. Everything's clean. <laughs> but what's great also is like when you're in a rear window, a lot of times that rear window will dive down in the rear, and so when you put the strap on there, your window hanger isn't level, so you can make it perfectly One level, right. which other window hangers, you're not going to be able to do that. And they all use a, a dowel to, to yeah. hold it and you lose the dowel and then you got to use your knockdown and, and yeah. whatever. It's just, it's, and it's those, are all, those are all things that were like on the list to eliminate. Yeah. yeah. I can't stand like to me, if you're going to push on a roof for 10 minutes or 10 hours, I felt like I should be able to get, exactly where I want to be set up wise with my hand in my arm, because I could for one, be more comfortable for two, be more precise. And then, you know, doing it all day. And yeah, I couldn't I swear find to God anything the, that would do that for me. So that, I swear to God, the first time I used it, um, I, I think I heard angels sing. I really did. <laughs> so. Well, you could now do it on the, the fly, uh, John. I mean, it's, it's literally yeah, like that's what on the fly is one handed. Yeah. Quick. Now is the, uh, the, the, crossbar is that soft or hard uh it it is actually the the part the the shaft is delrin actually it's a solid delrin rod okay uh, and then it has a, a heat shrink coating that a lot of guys are using now that x shaped heat or yeah. x tube and um it kind of evolved in that it it cut down on some of the i tried some scallops and stuff for round rods but it it just Got in the way for the square rod. Long story short, this kind of keeps the square rod and round rods, the pick tools when I'm using them from wanting to skip as bad when you're loaded up, you know, at angles yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah. So it, it kind of solved it in a way that really worked, or, you know, 
for for any tool that you pick up. And that stuff is so cheap that you you go on Amazon. If you tear it up, you just go on Amazon and buy like five feet of it for five dollars or whatever, and you take it off and put it on and he shrink it on. And you're good to go. That was my thought. You know, it is a sort of a consumable over. I've seen a few of them that have been used with like round rods and picks that they've been used. And they stood, you start to deteriorate on the top side of it. But like you said, a, a knife, cut it off and put a new piece on pretty quick. Yeah. So I just, it, to me, it was such an advantage um, that it's worth, you know, a year or two years later replacing it or whatever. So how, um, so how much does this um, small window hanger sell for? So I've got, it kind of evolved into two. I, again, if you, Go back to what I said about the military and being kind of that way. It started out, this is the uncoated version, but it started out hex shaped and a lot of more intricate machining. So that I, it kind of evolved into what I call the deluxe version comes in different colors. Uh, that one sells for two fifteen, And then I went back and just machined some round ends out of Delrin uh, to provide it works identical. But for the guy that doesn't care about it being green or red, I uh, sell this one for 175 and it just takes a lot of the machining moves out. A little more utilitarian, uh, works the same, but I wanted to yeah. provide that option for that guy. And then I'm the guy That's that good. likes it kind of the other oh, way. Yeah. So, I've, I've you got know. your website up here. It looks like you got black, lime green, red, composite, and a machined finish. Right. So the, like I said, the composite version is the more utilitarian. Uh, if you don't want to spend the extra money for the, the look and the color, uh, work the same. But for me, I just like, I don't know. I like the way the other looked, so I couldn't help but do both. <laughs> so it just turned into that. So well, and that's uh, that's two, good. Two You're, options. You you yeah. got your your feeding different markets. You know, you, you got the exactly. guy that wants to save a little bit of money and get the same thing, or you get the guy that wants to be a little bit more flashy and and wants to upgrade for the the so, shine, bright and shiny one. Before we move on, I want to just briefly talk about the usability of it. First of all, it stands up straight. So when you go to grab it, you grab it, you open your your door. the The dowels are sticking straight up. They're not flopping over. You, you put it into place, you close the door, you, you grab both ends and you adjust it to the, the level you want and exactly the, the length you want and you're done. And it's solid. It's rock solid. It looks great. It's worth every penny. And then you go to the XL model or the, what do you call that one? The, the one for the back hatch. Call it the yeah. hatch hanger right now. That's kind of hatch what hanger. everybody just gravitated towards. So that's what we called it. And so, basically, yeah. it's the same the except hanger. for you have two S hooks, which are high strength steel. They're not normal S hooks. I I noticed that right away. Did uh, yeah, I went I went uh, as far as I could trying to find something that would that would hold up. And these are as in the in this size that will fit in most of the holes that we need to use. These are as strong as I can find, and yeah. I've put them to the test. They will straighten out, but it takes a uh, it takes quite a bit to do it. Yeah. So yeah, um, but you got one smaller, one larger, so you can really fit them into the stock holes that you find in the rear hatch. And there's two on each side. So. Yeah, and the thing is rock solid as well. One of those is going to find a hole that it's going to fit in. Yeah, typically, yeah. yeah. I, I haven't been able to find anywhere that I really can't. You know, I do occasionally have to open the S hook up like always or something to, to get some holes depending on the angle or whatever, but usually they'll go. Um, so, and those are offered at all say, the same finishes as the door hanger. Correct. I have to say, I, I did take mine to the bench grinder <laughs> and of course. I, I yeah. sharpened the ends and made them pointy. Yep. So just. Just why, to make guys drink again. Why would you do that? Oh, ben, oh bench grinder. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bench grinder. Are you putting them through headliners or something? Trying to find holes? You needed a pointy? No, just, you know. If, if, something if to something, do, huh? Go to bench, the bench grinder. grinder it, it calls to me. The bench grinder calls. <laughs> you know, it's like I hear it calling. and I have You guys to, have already passed out. It just <laughs> Yeah. We're only 24 minutes into this show, and they've already yeah. passed out. Bench grinder. So, <clears throat> well, cool. So, yeah, uh, 
if you want some more information on it, go to Endeavor Dent Tools, and it's E N D E A V O R Dent Tools for us. Dot com. Uh, yeah, dot com for us. Uh, grammatically or spell, uh, <laughs> not so savvy people. Chronically. I'd say every dent guy. That's every dent guy that doesn't know how to spell. There is an A in Endeavor. I probably didn't pick the best word for a dent tool company, but that word just. It, it, it means something to me, so I don't know. I just I liked it and it, it worked. It so. resonated. It's good. <laughs> yeah, but so, that, the other tool you make is a hail rod. Two hail rods, right? Um, four. I see four hail rods. Yeah. Could you uh, get those in custom sizes if someone called you up and said, "I want a seventy-eight inch one"? Seventy-eight on the on the website. Yep. I've got the website up. No, sorry. Okay, <laughs> John's on it. Forty. No, it forty-six and a quarter. Inch, I want a forty-six and a quarter. <laughs> We'll do whatever you want, Vince. Right. I have okay. done it for guys for, you know, specific situations where they can only carry a certain length. That is one issue. It doesn't break down right now. Uh, it It's kind of where we're at. I've got some other ideas that we're playing with, but it not here's, breaking down. It, here's the thing it that really works. Yeah, <laughs> here's the thing that surprised me about it. So I had, I had three different dent rods on my last hail card that I was using. And I, I, went through all three rods and I kept on going back to years. And what I didn't realize that a round rod versus a square rod, it takes a lot of stress off your body. I mean, I was really, really shocked how it just rests perfectly and you don't have to, with a round rod, you're always using wrist strength. Yeah. And you were telling me a good story about a friend of yours that was having problems. Tell us that story. Um, Tony Pitts, the guy that helped me kind of conceive the, the whole idea. We, we were standing in my garage one night when that rod, the whole concept of going down that road started. And we were doing what we always do about kicking ideas back and forth and making something better and changing something. And we kept talking about, I don't remember I, I, it seemed like we were talking about picks because I'm bad to use picks a lot. And I, it, I, the realization was with so little throw in a pick to me, I feel like you can be more accurate. It doesn't want to slip on you. And that turned into fighting a round rod with, you know, an extension, two or three inch extension with a tip. You're fighting that, that movement or skip left and right. And your arms tensed up. So we, we both kind of looked at each other like, well, we can make it square. So we did that and uh, played around with some ideas. And, and Tony travels for Hale uh, instantly. He's done it so long. He's like a lot of guys I've talked to that have elbow, wrist, arm, you know, fatigue, pain, whatever you want to call it over time, especially the longer the season goes. And it wasn't just a few days and he was telling me, wow, I'm, I'm not feeling that in my arm. I, I'm able to relax my arm. I can actually push with an open hand. Sometimes my fatigue level is really diminished from where I, I was. And then we started attributing that to, well, you stand there and hold that grip pressure all day long for eight or 10 or 12 hours, maintaining the tip angle of that rod. And you don't realize how tensed up you are. And that you runs don't through. realize it. You, you have no idea. Oh my yeah. God. It, it was like it's, mind blowing how much you're gripping that thing and just the death got grip. your arm tensed and it's fatiguing that arm. You got a square rod. It's just sitting there resting. You're just pushing down on it. You have your hand open. You're just pushing down on it. And it's unbelievable. Now, it's so it, much better. Now, of course, there, there's a reason why there's round rods or round stock. It's cheaper than you know going out. The only other company that I've known that made something other than round was A1. They came out with a hex, hexagonal hexagonal yep. stock. Well, in carbon fiber, it's round is stronger. That's why. Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 Generally, round is a stronger. That's why uh, roll cages, that sort of stuff, race cars are all yeah. made out of. Exactly. Round. Tube. It, Tube it is a. It's a strong shape yeah. and the, the beauty of the extrusion 80, 20, we all know, but that, that web design, that engineered shape combats the battle that you face with square sides. It does a real good job of 
making up the difference between the round and the square. Yeah. And yep. it didn't really start out like that. I thought, well, I'm going to build a square aluminum rod or a carbon rod or something. And then it hit me with the extrusion and how much strength you gain through that square shape. Sure. So I tried it and right off the feel was there. The, it, it was almost as light as carbon fiber. It's, I, I mean, it has a way out tell like that. that it's heavier. You can't, you can't tell it in your hand hardly. No. But that sh- engineered shape gives you a lot of strength. Yeah. It makes up the difference between just having square sides. Yeah. Now you so have just worked out. You have a tip holder at the end that holds four tips at one time. Uh, I didn't want to say what what degrees those were at because I wasn't quite sure. I was assuming it was like a seventy degree or a twenty degree. Um, the the tip. So there's an angle on them, so which is that, more natural. Right. That happened, uh, g- going back to your question, I called the two, the shallowest angles. Those are the ones that I use the most. That's just kind of normal setup. Yeah. Those are actually canted forward at seven degrees. Seven degrees. Okay. <laughs> yep. And th- that started that same storm, same process of this all starting. I'm standing at the back of, I think it was a Ford Explorer watching a friend of mine work from the side off of leverage and the rod I watched him for a while, and every time he would set up, every time he would move, it didn't matter what distance he was coming in at, the rod was always coming in at an upward angle. So then the tip matching that upward angle on a 90-degree hail rod, it's actually entering the panel at a negative angle. Right. So I stood there and watched, and I'd never put it together actually doing it myself, but standing at the back of the car, looking through the car, watching him work, it just kept – I kept seeing it, and I was like, oh, my gosh. So I called Tony over actually, and we were looking at it and we both had that realization at that moment. Like we've been doing this wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. Every thinking, tool company is doing it wrong. 90 I, degrees I, sucks. It, <laughs> when well, you stand there and watch somebody else work. It's worked for many years, that. Daniel, <laughs> but this is better. <laughs> it doesn't mean it doesn't suck. <laughs> it sucks. It, I'm telling you all you tool it, makers out there, you suck. <laughs> Your angle it's, sucks. It's one of those things when you hold the rod in your hand, it it looks as if it should be square because it's more visually appealing, I think. But then when I was observing him work and that rod was always at an upward angle and I'm watching the tip enter the panel at a negative angle. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, we're picking dents with these sharp tips and needle tips and the, the precision that's required. Why hasn't that been taken into account? So we both looked at each other and, and agreed that we had to at least try it. Yep. So we end up in the shop with a jig playing with angles and trying to match what we thought was normal setup. And anyways, long story short, we settle on seven degrees and it's amazing how often it falls pretty close when you're set up on normal leverage. Sure. And, and then, you know what? It makes a difference. It I does. felt the difference. It, it, matters I don't when care you're what anybody says it matters when you're picking with a sharp tip i think it's coming in really clean it comes in really pinpoint there's no movement forward and aft because of the rod dragging or whatever that's very minimal but i i think you can feel it and then if you're using soft tips i think you're using more of the dome of that tip versus a side or off center from the dome and i it I couldn't believe how many people, once they started using it, like, man, I feel like I can be more precise and I can hit the spot quicker. Like I can get on the low quicker. And, I, and, you, know. you know what I compare it to? And when you're having sex, the, the right angle hits the G spot. <laughs> <laughs> it, you it want works. to hit the G spot, right, Vince? It works. Uh, sure. Right, John? Yeah, uh, apparently 90 degrees doesn't do it. Like, no. looking at me going, oh my God, what is he talking about? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. sure. <laughs> but no, Endeavor's it, rod hits the G spot. Well, Endeavor's I think what we could agree title. on, I think what we could yeah. agree on is that, you know, Chad has, has put in a lot of thought and work into this, and it's not just 80 20, you know, from Amazon. There's, there's a tip on here that, you know, is machined properly. Your handle, it slides, it locks into place, place so you could get the fulcrum point wherever you want it. If you want the, it shorter, you slide it up and turn it and it locks in. Yeah, your handle was brilliant. I mean, I know what, you know what, what 
guys don't understand is what goes all the details that go into a, making a tool it takes a lot of time, guys. You know, and a buttload of money. Yeah, a buttload of money. You know, your life is turned upside down when you're trying to make a tool perfect for everybody, and people don't understand that. No, so kudos to you. Yeah, well, and, well, thank you. Well, um, while we're on that topic, I think we need to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, because because uh, that's making tools. There's there's a lot of guys that have great ideas like Chad, uh, Daniel. You came up with the tank vise. John, we're still waiting for your invention, even though you know you're tied into Mobile Tech RX, which uh, was the, you know the greatest invention of the 21st century for uh, for PDR guys. We're we're still every waiting for you I to come up with the tool. Every time I come up with something, I'm like, I got this great idea. I'm gonna, and then I I get out there and there it is. It's like I just released this. It's right. Like, yeah, well, oddly enough, the the reason why I came up with the mat is because uh, John Hiley, Daniel, and uh, and Mike, they all challenged me to come up with the tool, and that's how I ended up with the mat. But we did, we did challenge you. You, you challenged rose me. to the, the occasion. I did, yeah, and I had that way. aha moment, like Chad was talking about, and uh, that's how I came up with the mat. It happened to be watching the TV program, I'm like that's for the surgical industry, but we need something like that for our industry and other industries. So yeah, and that surgical mat is how much? Uh, fourteen hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars, because it's all hermetically sealed and it could go into an autoclave and all that other stuff, so it could be used on multiple patients yeah. or victims, however you want to put it. But uh, I hear you're selling your mat to surgeons in Mexico. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah, they they don't care about uh, you know diseases all that much. <laughs> I got a major distributor down in Costa Rica. <laughs> in Ecuador. No. Uh but yeah, I want to touch on that because there's a lot of talk, you know, now that I'm we've all been in the tool industry, we deal with a lot of tool makers and uh there's a lot of guys out there that have great ideas. And especially hail guys, you know, you're out on the road for 6, 8 months, you're coming up with great ideas. And then you go home and then you go, you know, you got three, four months off and you're sitting around and you start putting these ideas into play. And then it's like, what do you do with these things? So, you know, a lot of guys think, oh, get started. Well, you, well, you can get started and get a website and get, you know, tools manufactured and dump $30,000 into making something that you're only going to sell 2000 of to a small industry. And it's really time consuming and it sucks the life out of you. Uh, I'm fortunate enough with my math that it crosses over different industries, but for the guys out there, you know, like yourself, Chad, that you're making it for our industry only, you know, a mechanic's not going to use, uh, you know, a hanger or a hail rod. So, you know, there's, there's other avenues out there. And I've been talking to some other manufacturers and a lot of them, they're looking for you guys that have these good ideas to bring them to them. And they will manufacture them for you. They will put it into play. They will pay you royalties or residuals, whatever you guys negotiate. And it's, you know, like Daniel, you have the tank vice. It, you literally get a check every quarter, right? Yep. You don't make it but anymore. Here's, here's, here's some advice, though. You, you can't just go to a tool company with an idea. You have to have a working prototype. Yeah. So if you got an idea, you have to come up with the prototype and you have to test that prototype. You have to test it with multiple dent guys. And the actually your best avenue is to send it to us and have <laughs> Let us, us test put it. it through the ringer. Really? Um, Let's test it. Yes. Well, we Daniel we will take it to the bench grinder have, and modify it. Yeah, send it, we can, send it back to you. We with, can give you advice. We can modify it. We can change it. We can make it better. Or, you know, we might not say it needs any bait, but we can also put you in touch with the right people to take you to the next level, like we did with Chad. And we're happy to announce that Chad's new window hangers are going to be available at Anson. Right, Chad? Yes, sir. It's uh, I'm I'm excited, really excited, yeah. with, you know, to to move forward with Anson and uh, see what we can do together. So, so well, you, Anson's you sound really excited, Chad. Hangers. You sound really excited. I am. <laughs> I, it it has been uh, it's been a 
a lot happened this week. It's been a good week. A um, whirlwind, right? Yeah, it started with a few conversations with Vince and Daniel, and then the next thing you know, I was on the phone with Craig, and uh, a day and a half later, we had uh, agreed and are moving forward. So um, when I started this venture, it was kind of the light at the end of the tunnel for me, it, precisely, to work with them. And uh, I figured much, much more time than it took to get here. So I'm extremely grateful to have the opportunity. Yeah. Well, look, guys, the, the one thing that I've learned and Chad's learned is, you know, doing dance is a creative process. Designing a tool is a creative process. Selling a tool is not a creative process. Not at it's all. It's not the fun part. It it's sucks. It's the part that you don't want to deal with. Handing it off to, like, a company like Ultra or Endeavor or A1 or or, or whoever, Dentcraft, whoever wants to carry your tool, who may be your fit is usually the best avenue and let they have worldwide distribution they have shipping centers they have all the infrastructure already set up so you don't have to do any of that that crap because i tell you that's not the fun part it's not you know, designing the next tool is this this has been a year of sleepless nights for me you know and trying to figure out what my manufacturer's doing? How come he's not making enough? How come I can't keep up with, uh, you know, demand and this and that? And then I can't advertise properly because he's only sending me thirty mats a month. You know, just nonsense and stuff like that. I'm a friggin' dent guy. I fix dents. That's what I do for a living. You know, the mat is great, and maybe it'll take off, and it will take off. I'm confident it will take off, and especially with the new manufacturer I have. But like when you're dealing with dent tools specifically there's guys that they these companies they market it they sell it for you they you don't have to do anything now chad he, he you're going to keep control of making them but you're just using them to to sell them and you're going to be selling them on your website as well uh but it's going to get into more hands when you get something on the anson truck or uh pro pdr solutions has a truck now i believe that drives around you know, you're going. There's only like six percent of dent guys that are actually on social media and listening to these podcasts and stuff like that. It's a really low yeah. number. And when you have vans driving around to hailstorms and and they're as soon as they get their hanger in their in their hand, dude, it's game over. It's like, yeah, give me two. You know, you're, it's such a great product that, uh, you know, as dent guys, we want to touch and feel. And a lot of our listeners depend on us to to tell them if something's good or not. And you know, if you guys can't touch and feel this, know that the Endeavor hangers are friggin' awesome, and it's definitely speaking, a buy. Speaking of that, now Anson's got their event going to happen at Front Range in Colorado here, November third. Well, the third, the, is, third? the third is the tech meetup. I'll be there uh, the third through the fifth or sixth. We're going to have the IMI certification going on the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Fifth and sixth. Okay. And tech meetup's the third. That's when I'm going to be there. Yeah. Now, good. I get uh, to see you, John, huh? It's yeah. Been a while. Chad, do you think you're going to be able to get them some hangers? Yeah, we're going to have them some hangers. Uh, we're. We're in the process of ramping up more and more production. Okay, that's uh, a week from this, from two days from now, dude. Yeah, <laughs> get we're, cracking. We're working. Yeah, we're working. <laughs> so, uh, if if not, they will be. It will happen really quick. Yeah, uh, it's, we're trying okay. everything. They, if everything plays out correctly, we hope to have them. If not, it will be soon thereafter. And um, at least they'll have a like uh, said, one to show it, off. Yeah, it came came together really quick. So. Um, sure. Just trying to get all the ducks in a row. But the good thing is, there's also the PDR, uh, the PDR Olympics. It's not PDR Olympics. What's what's the show in Branson? World Cup. The World Cup. I'm World sorry. Cup, the yeah. PDR World Cup is going on in Branson. Anson, Branson, Anson, Anson's going to be there with two vans. I'm sure they'll have it for that at least. And yes. we also have Christmas parties popping up all over the place. Uh, so make sure if, if you go to the Christmas party at Anson, they'll have it there. I'm going to be there for that. Uh, and also you have mobile tech expo, which definitely you'll have the presence there. So these guys are going to have plenty of opportunity to touch, feel and try and destroy your tool. That's, uh, that's what we want. Um, that's what Anson is going to help help with tremendously. Um, I still push every day. So, 
um, it's hard to do that every day and sell. So yeah, we're going to let them do what they're really good at. And um, yep. we'll go. Yeah, are you, much also, happier? Are you yeah, going to so, have a booth at MT? Uh, or that, are you going to work with Hanson? The plan originally before this development with Anson was to do a booth. And then uh, after talking to Craig, we've we've decided that I'm going to help however I can there. And uh, they'll have things on display and be doing the, the sales. Nice. Uh, and again, I'm not a very good salesman. I'm better at building tools and pushing dents. So I'm going to let them do what they're really good at. So uh, I think it will be it. I think that it will be the best scenario. So, yeah, yeah. And it's you know what I, I I would like to have like a little demo, so guys can use your hail rod, and because you don't know until you push that rod, so if you can have one of your rods with a hood there, so guys can really feel what it feels. You know, I know where there's going to be like say three cars sitting there that. Guys are going to be messing with anyway, so I mean, I'd say just <laughs> run a hanger into her and just go to town on the roof. We man. can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have an idea for a fixture that that would would allow it to be used, so that may come together. Uh, it cool. it is it is one of those things. It's different enough that until you use it for a minute or two, it it doesn't make sense. Everybody in their in their mind has. The picture of a round hell rod, and we've fixated on that. It thing. is, that. it is a, a bit of a mental block. I, I yep. will, will give you that because I had that mental block, and then that mental block went away as soon as I put it in my hand and I started pushing. I was like, oh my god! I, I, it's your been body. every single time that anybody's used it. Every one of them I've sold, it's been the same story. Like I don't know if I can use this, or I'm not really sure. And then it's the same story after 30 minutes or an hour. Here's, so. here's what I think you should do is make some kind of clamp that will clamp onto your tool and give you a square space to, to leverage your, your regular, you know, small rods, <laughs> make them square. <laughs> Cause it, when you do it, you're like, Oh, this is great. It, it's, um, you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're we're going long on this, so yeah. we need to wrap this thing up. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring it here. We're gonna bring it on home, right? <laughs> you know what, Chad? This was great. Um, really enjoyed talking to you. You know what I'm encouraged about is here's a young guy and a new guy to our industry developing tools. Can you imagine Vince and John what what he's gonna invent over his lifetime oh yeah he's already got a whole website full of badass stuff yeah, yeah. this guy's gonna be a huge guy in 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 the future and i like to think that we we had a little bit of bringing him to the forefront and you know bring him in the presence of, of other people to get get a little bit of notice i'm just glad that i finally oh. got the tools to try out and everything i think uh, uh Derek kessler and and uh dave johnson all these guys are like hey you need to check these out you need to check these out you know and uh, when I got him, I'm like, holy crap, this guy, this is legit. Killing it. So, uh, I, um, I owe a lot of guys. I, I, admittedly, I have stayed away from social media for a long time because I stay focused on work or whatever I'm doing, and I just never got involved with it. But the tools kind of demanded it, so I started. And I tell you, um, sucks you I, in. Still, I don't do it probably as much as I should. But I have met some tremendous guys that that helped. Uh, I would still be sitting here in a shop with a bunch of tools and nobody buying them if it wasn't for them. Yeah. And uh, Daniel reached out to me one day on Facebook, and uh, that's how all this started. And uh, I owe it to, like I said, you guys. And then there's there's a lot of guys out there from Instagram and Facebook that jumped on board and did things that, uh, you know, I, I didn't know that, I didn't know them from anybody, and they were willing to help. So it. Yeah it gives you faith in the people of our industry and uh, it's, it was kind of cool for it to happen like that. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And just to finish up Great the show, job, we have a couple minutes left. I, I just want to pick John's brain and you know, you were at mega media over the weekend. How did that go, John? You know, could you give us a brief synopsis? How did oh, yeah. good times? No, or what? I, I'm I sure it was a good massive time. amounts of brain swell. That's kind of what happened. I mean, uh, for those that aren't sure and think mega media is just one more, uh, dent show, it's not, it's for a local company. Um, 
whether you're a route tech or have a brick and mortar store. It's all about um, learning how to market and use modern marketing techniques. Uh, in fact, over the next year through 2019, you're going to actually see Mobile Tech RX use some of what they teach and preach at the Mega Media. And then it also, from Mobile Tech RX standpoint, um, we're going to, uh, we get a chance to do some one on one as well as uh, kind of talk about some of our new stuff that's coming out and what it is that techs want in a much tighter environment versus the Mobile Tech Expo. So yeah, it was it was great. That's um, good. Learned a lot. It looked like yeah. a good group of guys to you know learn together with and have some fun along the way. It wasn't it, was, it wasn't uh, a stuffy classroom, classroom was, right? Yeah, the classroom day was really helpful because we actually crashed John's internet at his shop. Uh, if you were the only one in there, you could pull in like 200 megabyte speeds, but you put 30 people logged into it at the same time trying to learn how to do a Facebook ad and send it to a, a designated target. Yeah, we crashed his internet at one point. And what does that consist of when you crash the internet? Did it just shuts down? It, it, only, only like one or two people get to use it, and everybody yeah. else is just screwed. Uh, I actually tethered my laptop off of my phone yeah. in order to keep going. But it was great. It was that intense. Um, I ended up speaking for MTRX for two and a half hours um, between two different days, going through walkthroughs, uh, demos, tips, tricks, anything that anything that was helpful to get, just help you get a leg up on your competition. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, Mike and John, they do a great job doing that, and uh, it takes a lot of work and effort in, into doing that. Uh, so, you know, if you guys are ever thinking about going there, talk to one of us or, or talk to John. And not, uh, not to mention, you know, everybody sees on social media the great pictures. Yeah, the pictures are great. Oh, the photo shoots are intense. Yeah. Derek Yost, you know what? Got to give a huge shout out to Derek Yost. Not only do we get the Yost XL out of him, but he really, he is like the go-to gopher at yeah, the Mega great Media guy. events. Yeah, he is. He is all over everywhere, making sure that everybody's getting their photos done, uh, photo ops. I mean, we got a ton of them done on the new release screens for mobile tech that you all are going to see at the Mobile Tech Expo. Um, all the all the different photos were just a lot of fun. Uh, those of you who've seen my candid photos, I always get a great opportunity to do lots of candid photos. Got I, can, I can't wait for Mobile Tech RX because I mean uh, for Expo, uh, the oh. Expo. Because Mobile Tech RX is, uh, can we say that they're doing something new? Sure, no. sure. No. Uh, I haven't. It's not that we're doing something new. It's uh, something different. What it was was Eric Eric Garth. He has designed every screen in Mobile Tech RX. So as you go through it, he has designed them all. He kicks them back to Dustin, Damon, and myself. And then we kind of critique, and then it goes up to Albert and the, the programming crew, and they say what the can and can't be done, and then we tweak them out from there. And the Mobile Tech RX has got the, – the flow is great. The, the screens, the colors, everything was great. But we got to thinking, can you improve? Can we make it better? Isn't that what the four of us sitting up here talking about? Can yeah. we make it better? Can we make So what we did was we reached out. I mean, our home is in Austin, Texas. It's the tech's capital of – of the world pretty much right now. Uh, it's just crazy. It's second Silicon Valley. And we found all these people and graphic designers are coming on and, you know, they're sending us their samples. It's like, yeah, we killed it, man. Ours was way better. Next one come in. Yeah, way better. And then one guy sent one in and we're like, damn. <clears throat> well, we're a little block and tackle looking with Crayola, you know, uh, it, it just blew us away. Uh, tested it out. Take a phone, a tablet, anything with cover, go out in the sun, it just washes them out. You know, we've all seen that. We've all had tablets outside in the sun. Yeah. 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 Your phone? Yeah. We've got it just pops. It, it sticks out the more. New the design flow. pops. Yeah, it's it uh it is crazy. And it it was awesome. Even Eric sat back and he was like, Man, he he's like, Man, I can't I can't stare at this too long because he was in the middle of redesigning a new screen and he was like, I just feel like I'm a kid with a crayon. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's it's going to come out. You're going to see some teaser shots right before MTE. Those are some of the shots that we did uh, during the Mega Media, and it's going to release right at MTE. So. Sweet. Ooh. Well, great. 
Well, yeah. All right. That's awesome. So I'm, I'm glad that you- Let's close on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's close on that. And then I'm glad that you shared that with that, with our listening audience. That's awesome. Yeah. So this has been episode 142. And I want to thank each and every single one of you for tuning in and keeping us going. And don't forget, guys, level up your tools. And don't do stupid stuff. And I still got to come up with something. This has been another episode of PBR Tool Time.